service is Sunday, and man, it's going to be a great time in the Lord. The youth group is going to be ministering. We're going to worship and pray. Sunday school at 11, evangelistic at 12, and children's choir is going to be singing. So invite somebody to the house of God. Bring yourself, bring your kids, bring your neighbor's kids, bring the kids that are playing ball in the park, bring the kids that are shoveling snow. Just bring them. Amen. We've got a church fan. Go pick it up. Amen. You've got keys here. We pick it up. We'll go drive around, pick up a bunch of kids, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord on Sunday. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, beginning at verse number 11. The Bible says, When I was a child, I spake as a child, understood as a child, thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. I just want to talk a little bit tonight about spiritual progression or spiritual maturity, however you want to look at it tonight. In the natural, there's so much in our life that you can refer the natural to the spiritual. And one of them is just how we progress as babies, how humans, the fact that we're born until when we grow up and when we pass away. And it's just a phenomenal thing when you really think about it. Everything that goes into, number one, just even creating a baby, you know, DNA and genes and all these chromosomes, you know, you got all this stuff going on and nerves that have to be connected and trillions upon trillions of nerves and the spinal column and you got to create, you know, God creates a brain and the senses and to be able to see and to smell and taste. I mean, it's just a, it's a tremendous miracle being having a baby and seeing it, you know, everybody now posts those pictures on Facebook. I'm seven weeks pregnant. This is what's going on in my baby, you know, my belly. This is, I'm 13 weeks pregnant. I'm 27 weeks pregnant. I'm 43 weeks pregnant. I'm about to kill this child because I'm overdue and I haven't gotten this baby up yet. And so, in our lives, we talk about maturity, but when we are baptized, it's the same thing in the natural. When we are baptized, we use the term that we are born again. Because when Jesus was addressing Nicodemus in John chapter number 3, Jesus tells Nicodemus that you must be born again. And Nicodemus is looking through the eyes of the natural. And he says, which is kind of a weird thought if you think about it, how am I going to get back into my mother's womb? How am I going to get born again? I, you think, I, I think it's freaky enough having a, my wife gave birth to two eight-pound babies. One was eight, seven, and eight, eleven, I think. And so it's freaky enough having an eight pound baby. My little sister Melissa was 11 pounds and four ounces. She was a monster. And just the thought of an 11 pound, when she came out, I was like, good God, that thing's huge. And so, you know, I can't think of having an 11 pound baby popping out, but you got, I mean, Nicodemus is thinking, how am I going to crawl, you know, six foot, however big Nicodemus was, how am I going to get back in my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, I'm not talking about the natural, I'm talking about being born of the water and being born of the spirit. When you have repented, been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are now born again. You're a brand new person. It's just like bringing home a brand new natural baby. As a newborn baby, as I have done this a second time and the spikes are doing right now, but you know, you bring home a brand new baby, they don't just pop out of the womb and start talking. They don't pop out of the womb and just start walking and start doing all this stuff. It takes time. They don't speak correctly. They don't do a whole lot. They lay there and literally eat and sleep and poop. And that's about the gist of their existence for months. Not much going on. They can't walk, can't go to the bathroom in the actual toilet. They can go to the bathroom. We all know that. Change 14, 15 diapers a day when they're an infant. They can't really play, pick up toys. They, all they're good for is making messes. And they need a lot of attention. That's what newborn babies are. Just as babies then progress in the natural, then we need to make sure that as a church that we are providing the same care spiritually. In 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 2, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in depth. In 1 Peter 2 and 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. As newborn babies in the natural, as good old Pastor Ebright would say, you can't feed a baby a pork chop. You say that all the time, and I crack up every time you say it. Because it's ridiculous. You know that Rocco wasn't born, and I just cut up, I grilled a steak and gave it to him and said, Here, boy, eat. That's, that's Pastor Ebright saying, doesn't have to eat. You can't chew it. You can't choke. So, the same principle applies. When you have a baby, mothers breastfeed or they have formula that they use to nurture and to nourish the child. You can't do 
meat right away because they haven't developed teeth. They don't know how to handle this. Their stomach can't handle real food yet. So it takes some time to develop these things. And so with a, in order for us to grow or progress spiritually, we can't jump from being born again into meat. And we're going to get into that in a minute, but we have to start out with foundational things. We start out with the sincere milk of the word. Topics like understanding the gospel message is a milk. It's sincere milk of the word. Understanding what is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. How it correlates to repentance and baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We need to understand as newborn babes that understand why prayer. What is prayer and why it's so important? What is praise and why is that important? Worship, why is that important? Giving, love, serving, witnessing, the importance of church, the Beatitudes, the fruit of the Spirit, things like this. How about when you come in contact with God that He changes you and what changes begin to take place? Those are all topics that are sincere milk of the Word. And so when we get Born again, we can't just jump into what is the third heaven and talk about the gifts of the Spirit. And let's talk about Revelation and the Antichrist and the white horse and the pale horse. I mean, there are some things that you need to grow thereby. But he says, as newborn babies, desire, desire the sincere milk of the word. Get the foundational things down first. Because when you get that stuff down, then you can advance into other things. In fact, the scripture right before Peter says, desire the sincere milk of the word, in 1 Peter 2, 2, in verse number 1, he says to lay aside all malice and guile and hypocrisies, envies and evil speakings. Those are foundational topics. So when we start out as babes in Christ, we desire sincere milk of the word. Just like in the natural, we drink milk, and that's what we need to get from God. But not only that, we don't want to just stay in that phase of getting sincere milk of the word. Because you don't breastfeed a 5-year-old. You don't breastfeed a 12-year-old. You don't breastfeed a 20-year-old. Eventually, you want to progress them and wean them from formula and wean them from milk so they can go into eating some real food. You know, with babies, a lot of times you start off with the milk and then you may go into some of that rice cereal stuff. And then you move on into some of the oatmeal and, and some very soft things like applesauce or you get the baby food or my wife does the puree stuff. She gets the vegetables and blends them all up, purees it, puts some water, whatever she does and lays them out in ice cubes. And so when it's time for the babies to eat, we just heat up the ice cubes and they've got peas and beans and it's a lot cheaper than buying baby food all the time. But you progress from milk to the baby food and then you can start chewing on little things like chicken and Cheerios, and then you can move on to getting some bigger things like that. God did not save us and get us to be born again to stay in the milk stage. Just like babies at six months or seven months, they got to start eating some bigger food. And after a little while, you get some teeth and you start cutting, you get some bigger food. We need to progress and mature spiritually. God doesn't want us to stay in the milk stage, but he wants to advance us in the kingdom of God. In 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3, the Bible says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hereto, hitherto you are not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, and there is among you envy, strife, divisions. Ye are not carnal, are ye not carnal, and walk as men. What Paul is telling the church of Corinth is this. He said, I want to expound on some bigger things. I want to expound on some deeper topics. But he couldn't do it because they were still in need of milk. Even though at the point of Paul writing this, that church had been established for a little while. It wasn't a brand new word that Paul was trying to talk to them. This had been established for a few years now. And Paul's going back to them and writing to them saying, I, I thought by now we would have progressed a little bit. I thought by now we would have understood some of the basic things. I want to teach you meat. I want to get into these deeper things. But he said, you're not able to bear it. I fed you with milk, but it looks like I'm still going to have to feed you there. But because of carnality, it wouldn't allow the deeper things of God to be taught to them. 
He mentions things like envying, strife, and divisions. And first off, he says they're babes. Babes, we know, means to be an infant. But in the Hebrew and the Greek, it also means to be an immature Christian. And so what I fear has developed and what God's been talking to me about is not even in this church, but in the church in general, is we have gotten to the point where we have people always in the baby stages. And we have not progressed into getting into the stronger me. Why does the church digress? It's because people aren't advancing spiritually. In the case of the church of Corinth, it was because of carnality. They couldn't overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And because of it, they could not go into the deeper things of God. Let me just say, one of the things that will stop us or anybody from maturing spiritually is carnality. Because the more you want of God, the more understanding you want, then you have to give up a little bit more to get more. In order to understand the deeper things of God, you've got to let go of some fleshly desires and fleshly thinking and, and what we listen to, what we watch, where we go. We've got to let go of some of the carnal things and we've got to pick off the spiritual man. So he's saying we can't be immature Christians. I don't want you to be immature, but he wants to see them grow. And so he uses things like envy as basic things to overcome. Things like jealousy. Envy means jealousy. Strife means quarreling or to be contentious. Divisions means disunion or dissension. A lot of that has to do with what we talked about a couple weeks ago about releasing our brother and our sister. When we release our brother and our sister, there's no room for jealousy. There's no room for lust. There's no room for quarreling. Somebody does something against you, we forgive them, we release them, and it's done. There's no room for quarreling. Because of that, there's no room for division. And so God is working with us on that. And so we need to overcome that. There's some other things that we are going to get into the strong meat or the meat of what God has for us. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, we read this verse. When I was a child, I spake as a child, understood as a child. And thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. When you were a child, it was awesome for you just to make noises. You know, the first time a baby starts cooing, it's incredible. Look at that, he made a noise. I mean, that's, it's awesome. They're progressing. They're, but all of a sudden, they're making noises. They're playing with toys that has flashing lights and annoying sounds. Good Lord, man. Whoever made baby stuff, they're crazy. It's annoying when all these little things going off. You touch the floor and it vibrates. This toy goes off and that toy goes off. And it's, in, it's in, like going into a madhouse. People are always in your face as a baby saying peekaboo. Things like, I'm going to get you. They talk baby talk to you. That's what we do to babies. We talk to them. My mother-in-law, up until Ben was like five, before Rocco was born, she would still, every time we walk in the door, my, and Ben is four or five years old now, I've been talking to Ben as a normal person since he was like six months old. And my mother-in-law would go, and we'd open the door in the back, and you have to walk in the, the basement, and you walk up the stairs to get to the main portion of the house. And on her door, there's a bell. And so when you turn the handle and you shut the door, you hear the jingling of the bell. And my mother-in-law, from the kitchen or the living room, would say this exact same phrase all the time. To a four-year-old boy, I hear somebody. I'm like, Jill, he is four years old. You don't have to talk to him. Are you hungry? He's four years old. We progress into doing things. But she was stuck keeping him into that little baby phrase. But we find that's what we do with babies. But sooner or later, we find that babies will start making words. Dad, dad, mama. In Rocco's case, one of his first words was brother. Because he loves his brother. Sooner or later, they're making words. They're walking. They're kissing you and all that stuff. They learn how to wave, give high fives. They learn how to fish them. And is it too long after that? They're learning to run, to play. Start to recognize animals and the sounds that they make. What's a doggy say? What's a monkey do? We do that all the time. They start to count. They start to identify colors and shapes. They start to get the alphabet and the sounds that the letter makes. They learn to count. They learn to read. Before you know it, they're in school. Then before you know it, they're driving. They're graduating. They're going to college. They're married. They're having kids. And then it just, your grandpa, then maybe a great-grandma, a great-grandpa, and it just, time just goes away. In our natural maturity, as we mature, we put away childish things. I can't imagine. 
imagine a 15 year old person walking around saying, goo goo ga ga, mama, put her up. I can't imagine that Carlos is 16. I can't imagine Brother Carlos going to Sister Gabby and saying, ah, hold me, hold me, mommy. You don't think that, no, we don't do that as 15 year old person. We laugh at something usually we call immature. There is a time that we grow up. My son laughs at the word poop all the time. And so do you. You all need to grow up. If you do, guess what? Ben laughs. And I guess what? When I'm at home, I do the same thing and laugh with him because it's hilarious. But my wife always says, when are you going to grow up? When are you going to grow up? Have you ever told you that before? When are you going to grow up? When are you going to mature? There is a time in life where we begin to put away childish things and you become a man or you become a woman. It's a time where all of a sudden you've got to get a job and you've got to study on your own. You've got to learn to drive. And you quit, you know, you get a job and you quit playing video games all day. You quit laying on the couch and watching movies. It's time to grow up. It's time to get out into the real world and do something. But the same thing can be said spiritually. God didn't create us just to say goo goo gaga and say up and say, you know, love you and stuff like that. God, he loves us when we're in the baby stage to do that. You know, I said up. I need you up, Jesus. You know, we can do that when we're a newborn in God. But he didn't save us just to look at flashing lights on toys that make sounds. He didn't save us to do that. It is good to progress or it's good progress for a season. Maybe you never noticed this before. And with babies, they notice the flashing lights and the sounds. And it's good. But you don't want them to stay there, but you want them to progress. You try to put them on their belly so they get used to their belly so they can roll over. And then when they're on their belly, they can get up on their forearms and army crawling. Then they get on their all fours and they're really starting to move. And, you know, you want to see them progress. If somebody never advances past a certain stage, then one would say in the natural that they have a deformity or a learning disability or that something is wrong. If somebody, if you notice a baby doesn't progress past a certain point, we go and have them tested because maybe they have autism. Maybe there's something going on that is disrupting their growth. And so the spiritually, the same thing can happen. If we are not progressing spiritually in God, then maybe we have a learning disability. Maybe there's something that's not right. There's something we need to examine ourselves, as the Bible says, to see what is stopping me from growing more in God. What's stopping me from getting from the milk of the word into the meat of the word. In the natural, we don't go, most people don't go from kindergarten to third grade. But you go to kindergarten and you graduate from kindergarten. And then you go to what grade? First grade, right? First grade. Why? Because there are things you learn in kindergarten that is going to be foundational for first grade. And you don't go from first grade to tenth grade because you're going to miss some stuff that they're going to build upon to get you to what you're going to learn in tenth grade. And so you look at second grade or third grade. It's a natural progression. You don't learn algebra before learning how to add and subtract and multiply and divide. Because adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing are the foundational aspects of algebra. You have to know how to add and subtract. So if x minus 2 equals 4, you got to know the 0 out the 2, you got to add to. And you've got to do all this other stuff. And so the same thing is in the spirit as well. To, do, to learn algebra before learning how to add or multiply, subtract or divide is unproductive because you don't have the foundational or the basics of mathematics. You don't graduate kindergarten and move from one grade to another without passing a test at the end of the year that shows that you know what you were supposed to learn for that year. If you don't do well, then what happens? You get held back. You get held back a year, maybe two years, or until you learn what needs to be learned in that grade. Spiritually speaking, it's the same thing. If we can't get past the basic fundamental principles about lifestyle and attitude, then we can't progress to the next level because that new level 
is dependent upon the level of understanding at the foundational level. It's hard to understand God if we don't know who He is. It's hard to understand if we don't know the sacrifice of who God is. When you understand who Jesus Christ is, everything in the Bible begins to make sense. It's a foundational topic of the oneness of God that needs to be understood before we can progress into other things. And so, spiritually, we've got to make sure that, that we're there. We can't get into the gifts of the Spirit if we don't treat our brother right, if we don't have the fruit of the Spirit now. We can't develop spiritually if we don't submit to leadership of the church. We can't be used in speaking good things if we're constantly having to battle gossip and backbiting and slander and evil speaking, whether it be against your brother or sister or family member, ministry, whatever. And so we've got to make sure that we conquer the basic fundamental things so we can progress into the more spiritual things. What God's been talking to me about for the last few weeks is that we want to graduate, for lack of a better term, from kindergarten to third grade, or from kindergarten to fifth grade. But we, have, but we haven't put in the time to advance. Some people have been tested on basic fundamental things, but we haven't passed the test. And the great thing about God is He doesn't just fail you and discard you, but He lets you repeat the test. And you can find all throughout the Bible how different people, Jacob being one of them, he was asked his name on one occasion and he gave his name Jacob. But then when he asked his name a second time, he gave the correct name of being Israel. God gave him another chance to realize who he was after the change, after he was wrestling with the angel at that night. And so just how God gives Jacob a second chance, he gives other men and women of God in the Bible second and third chances. God will give you a second and a third chance to progress from one level to the next level. But what we cannot afford to do is to stay at that level. In the natural, if our kid doesn't pass kindergarten, what happens? We go back to kindergarten. But what if the kid doesn't want to go to school? What happens if you don't bring your kid to school? Everybody know? You go to jail. You don't take your kid to school, you go to jail. And so we have placed such a value on education, naturally, that there is a jail term if you do not bring your kids to school because we want them to learn. The government wants us to be smart so we can outdo China and outdo Japan and some of these people that are probably leaps and bounds above where we are. And so they're saying, go to school, get an education, go to college and do all of these things. And if you don't, it's punishable by you going to jail. And so we get up every morning, five days a week, most weeks, for, you know, 180, 185 days, however many days are in the school year now. We get up in the morning, we get our kids ready, we get them breakfast, and we take them to school, or we get them ready for the bus, and they go to school, because we try to avoid the jail time. But can I tell you that spiritually, that we need to take on that same mentality. In the natural, if somebody has a stuffy nose, we don't let our kids stay home from school. Probably for the most part because we want time away from the kids. <laughs> We're like, get all to school. Let Miss Mortalise take care of you today. Let so and so take care of you today, whoever the teacher is. But we have such a value and an importance on school. We want our we don't want our kids to grow up and be dumb. We don't want our kids to grow up and not get a good job. We don't want our kids to grow up and, and we want them to be successful. We want them to get a good job to make some money, take care of themselves, so you don't have to pay for them when they're 35 years old and when they're 40 years old. But you want them to get on with their themselves. But spiritually, what we do is we do the opposite. We learn, well, let's just go to Hebrews 11, 6. What we do in the spiritual is we need to come to school and learn and mature. If we don't, you know what the punishment is spiritually? Yeah, this poor little word starts with an H and it's an L. Put it together. L. Yeah. In the natural, if we don't 
to go, we've got to have faith, and faith comes by hearing the word of God. So where or how do we get hearing the word of God? Romans 10 verse 14, go back three verses. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And so if we are going to progress and mature, we need to get over basic things. We need to constantly we're being tested by God. But I want to pass these tests. A prayer meeting a couple weeks ago. I shared this with Brother Alante a couple weeks ago too. But the Lord spoke to me about the spiritual dumb babies that we, we not necessarily as a, our church, but as a church in general that we are creating. And, the, and God spoke to me in this word, babies that are void of understanding. And so the church can't progress into fivefold ministry. The church can't progress into the gifts of the Spirit because we still battle things like just being faithful to God, just loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. And we people can talk all day long about wanting to be used in this gift and wanting to be used in that and this ministry. But if we can't, as the Bible says, if we can't be faithful in little things, then how can we be faithful in big things? If God can't trust us, and if we can't pass the test of just coming to church or being faithful in our Bible reading, why would he trust us with a word of prophecy? Why would he trust us with a gift of healing if you're never in church to pray for the people that need the healing? Why would he do that? He will not advance you if we cannot grasp just the simple things of God. It's like a kindergartner trying to go to college. It doesn't happen very often. Every once in a while... It does. You'll find a 12-year-old going to Harvard, and that just blows my mind. I can't even fathom that. But it doesn't happen very often. So we've got to pass certain benchmarks, and God's got to check us off and say, okay, faithfulness, boom, you've got an A. Let's move on. Amen. Let's talk about praise. Are you a praiser? Amen. And you're going to go through hard times to see whether or not you're still going to praise God. But if you praise Him in the storm and in the bad times, you're going to get an A. All right. He's learned how to praise. Let's talk about worship. Amen. Are you worshiping God when things are going right? Or are you all worshiping Him when things are going wrong? And everywhere in between. All right. You pass that. Let's talk about faith. Are you are you willing to trust Him when you have no money? Are you willing to trust Him when you're sick and you prayed three times and you haven't been healed yet? Are you still believing in me? Or are you going to tuck tail and run? No. All right. You pass the test of faith. And so we then can progress into the bigger things of God. I think one thing about our church is I believe that we are progressing. Because some of the things that we have seen here in the last six to eight months or so are things that normally wouldn't have happened. And so, but because there's been a lot of preaching, I think God has been preparing us for this moment of where we are right now. God talked to us a lot about faithfulness and a lot about basic fundamental things. And I think people have gotten a hold of it as by uh, the, the attendance on Tuesdays have been up dramatically. And not only attendance numerically, but man, hasn't the power of God been moving in such a great way on Tuesday night? Why has it been happening? Because we're progressing. We're moving from one stage to the next. We're not staying on the same level, but we've graduated from this and now we're moving on into some bigger things. And so I believe that God is taking us there, but I don't want to just... I don't want to just stay at the level. And yes, there is a learning curve. And yes, you're going to stay at that plateau for a little bit. You stay in third grade for 180 school days. And then you pass the test. And then you get summer off. And then you move to fourth grade. And you're challenged a little bit more. And yes, we're at a place now that we've, I believe, advanced to a new level. And so we're going to be here maybe for a little bit. And we're going to learn. And we're going to learn some more things about where we are. Being more sensitive to the Spirit of God. And then God's going to test us. Do you really believe? Do you really trust? Do you really understand what's happening? And we may fail the test, but thank God he'll redo it. Amen. I had a few redo tests. I didn't have them very often, thank God. Amen. But every once in a while, the teacher would give us a retest because everybody bombed it. You know what? Thank God for retest. Amen. But he gives us another chance. And guess what? When we get that down, then we're going to elevate to a new level. And then we're the same process is going to happen over and over and over again. Hebrews chapter 5, 12 through 14. The Bible says, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
Strong meat belonging to them that are full age. Even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Paul's telling these people that they should have advanced to being teachers. But because they kept failing the test, he said, now we've got to go backwards. And we've got to redo the milk stage. We've got to treat you as babes. Because he says, strong meat belongeth to them that are a full age. He says, I've given progress to where you need it to be. And that you need one to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. They needed to go back to the basics. And so you'll find even in our church every year, you're going to hear teaching still about repentance and why it's important. Why? Because the church is going to continue to grow. We've got some people that have never heard what it means to repent. And so we're going to teach on repentance yearly. We're going to teach on baptism in Jesus' name. And I hear people tell me, why are we talking about that again? Because we've heard this. Guess what? Some of you still can't explain why we baptize in Jesus' name. If I asked you right now why, it would be because the Bible says. And guess what? In today's society, it doesn't cut it. In today's society, just saying because the Bible says so doesn't mean jack to anybody. But they want to know more than one place. Where does it say? So we can bring them to Matthew 28, 19. And we can bring them to Acts chapter 10. And we can bring them to Acts chapter 19. And we can bring them to Acts chapter 8. And we can talk about 1 Peter where, where the Bible talks about that when the, the earth was covered. It's a like figure. Once you baptism, they'll also save us now. We can talk about Mark 16 and 18. We can talk about all these scriptures. And so... And you're going to hear teaching about baptism. You're going to hear teaching about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You're going to hear teaching about prayer. You're going to hear teaching about fasting, about worship, about praise, about giving. All these foundational topics because numerically the body is going to grow. We're going to have newborn babies. Always isn't that what the church is supposed to be anyway? We're supposed to be birthing people of the water and of the spirit. And so we're going to hear some of that. But also as we advance. And yes, we do that for the new convert's sake and for the guest's sake, but on Thursday nights, maybe even some Sunday mornings, we're going to have some more in-depth topics and some things that we're going to do. We're going to be changing some formats coming up this year, and I might talk about that in a minute. I might not. I don't know. We'll see. But we're going to do some changing of formats here in, a, in about a month or maybe less. So we're going to get into some of that. But we go back to the basics. They needed to go back in this church in Hebrew. They had to go back to the school and learn. They digressed spiritually. They didn't learn the basic doctrinal principles or the attitudes or serving. Paul told them that they, would, they were babes. In other words, there was no maturity there. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age. Or, another way of saying that, strong meat belonging to them that have matured. Because some of the things, if you try to understand without having a basic foundation, it'll just blow your mind. You say, I just can't figure all this out. And so people quit. What happens when you try to figure something out and nobody's there to teach you? You quit. You give up on it. If I play, and I do this with video games, where I used to, when I used to play all the time, there would become a game that are a part of the game I couldn't figure out, and guess what I did? I just quit playing. Why do people sometimes quit church? They get to a spot they don't understand, and instead of asking, or instead of the church that they're in or whatever, developing and progressing spiritually, they get frustrated in not understanding and so they say, why bother? And so they leave. But we're going to create an atmosphere and a culture that people are going to always be progressing no matter what stage they are in God. We want them to go graduate from milk to strong meat, people that are maturing spiritually. The very next verse is Hebrews 6 and 1. Paul says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God. Paul didn't want to have to lay the foundations again. He wanted to be past that. He wanted deeper things. He wanted to teach, if you want to call it, the calculus of spiritual things. Those of you that don't know calculus, is it above algebra and trigonometry and all that stuff? I, was, I took calculus in high school, and calculus too, and that thing really blew my mind. I don't even know how I even got a grade in that class. I couldn't tell you anything about it. I took a second year talking about that. It was nuts. And so you move on. But they couldn't grasp it because they weren't there yet. Look at that phrase. Let us go on to perfection. If you look at that phrase, perfection there means completeness. Both morally and mentally. 
He says, let us go on to perfection. Or let us go on to maturity. In the natural, I don't want my kid living with me at 30 years old and he's still stuck in a 16-year-old mentality. I hope that when he goes to kindergarten, he's learning. He's, I mean, he could read before kindergarten. Half the stuff he does, he could do in his sleep. But he's going to be challenged first grade. He's going to learn some new things. Second grade, he's going to learn. We're going to keep pressing and keep reading, keep studying. And then he's going to grow. And he's, now he's using words now I can't even imagine. I, maybe it's typical of a five-year-old. I don't know. But it's my first kid. And I'm like, man, he's a pretty smart dude, I think. He's progressing. Your kids are progressing. That's why they're moving on from one grade to the next. And so we go on to perfection. The goal is when they graduate high school, they have a working knowledge of the world, a working knowledge of basic things, and they can, you know, fend for themselves a little bit. They're growing and they're maturing both socially and knowledge, how they conduct themselves. They're growing and they are maturing. And spiritually speaking as well, we can't have people be on the pew 10 years and not advance spiritually. We can't have people be on the pew five years and not advance spiritually. But if you look at a child, every single day it seems like they're learning something new. Every single day I look at Rocco, something is changing. Something. And you know what? It's because we don't, you know the term baby them? I don't baby the baby. But hey, you want to come see me? I got to that point a few months ago. You want to come see me? Get on your two feet and walk. Or get on your two feet and crawl. Daddy can't go up to you and pick you up all the time. I can't do that because it's hurting your growth. And so I had to back away from him. I had to put him down. And I hate seeing him cry. He drives me crazy, number one. And two, he's just so cute. He cries. He's just so helpless. I want to go help him. But, you know, Lindsay tells me, my wife tells me, she says, well, he's, I said, he's crying. I'm going to go get him. And she says, you don't know why he's crying, right? Because he knows you're going to go pick him up. And that's my weakness. I'm an old softy with that. Kids cry. I just want to go pick him up. I love him. Give him hugs. Give him kisses. But Lindsay said, if you just leave him alone, he'd learn to get by without you for a little while. When I get home from work, it's daddy, 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 up, daddy. And so I love it. And I pick him up, but then I got to help the dishes and help get dinner together and do this with Ben. And it's hard to do it. And I've got one hand tied up with a 21 or 22 pound kid now. And so he's leaning this way and wanting to touch this picture and do that. And it's hard to do. And so we had to teach him. You want to come? You got to walk. You got to do this. And so we're trying to get him to mature. And so every day in your walk with God, some of you maybe have just gotten into church. You've been in church a week or two. Some of us have been in church years and years and years. And if you look back, if you were at the same place where you were 20 years ago, there's a term for that, what I would call this backsliding. The kingdom of God is advancing. And so if we are not advancing with it, then we are falling further and further behind. If I'm following Sister Christina and she's walking and I'm standing still, pretty soon she's going to be at the back door and I'm still here. The gap between her and me has grown exponentially. I'm falling away. And so that's where it's happened to the churches. Is we have fallen away. We have not kept up to where God has wanted us to be. But I believe we have some people that are really wanting to play catch up. We've got some people that it's pedal to the metal. And we're going a thousand miles an hour. And we're just going to reach out and grab people on the way. And throw them in the back of the truck and say, hang on baby. We're going a long way. And we're going real fast. So you better learn quick. Learning on the fly. And I thank God for people like that that are pushing. But we've got people that have just been in church a little bit. And you say, well, what am I supposed to do? We learn basic things. We get reestablished with who is Jesus. What is the sacrifice that God did for us? Well, let's talk about the love of God. How much he loves you. That he leaves the throne of heaven and robes himself in flesh and gets killed for you. Let's talk about basic fundamental things. Let's get that down pat. Understand the love that God has for you. Understand what he did for you. That he wants to fill you with love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness, goodness and faith, meekness and temperance. We know those as the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. We want you to know that. We want to teach you why praise and worship is important. Why, it is, why faithfulness is important. Amen. And, and just simple, basic things like that. Why we need the church. Why we need each other. And then you're going to find yourself because the church is progressing. You're going to pick up on things really quick. I believe that these last days. I believe people are going to pick things up really quick. The basic foundational things are going to be picked up quick. We can't neglect it, but I believe they're going to be understood a lot faster. And it's going to allow people.
people to catch up to where the majority of the church is heading. And you're going to catch up and be a part with us. You're going to be used in ministry and used in the gifts of the Spirit. And be able to hear the voice of God and feel His Spirit like never before. And you're going to be doing things you never thought were humanly possible. Because you're going to progress from one stage to the next. I want to do what he said in Hebrews 6 and 1. I want to go on to perfection. I want to be a full-blown spiritual man. I don't want to be a newborn babe anymore. I've been in church for 23, 24 years. I don't want to be where I was at 7 years old saying, man, they've got drums. That's cool. Hopefully by now I'm past all that. Those people sound like turkeys. That was my first thoughts coming into apostolic church. They're all a bunch of turkeys. They're saying the weird stuff. What's wrong with them people? But they have a drum set, so they're cool. Hopefully we're past that. We move on into things. But just stand with me. I want to go on to perfection. And so what we are doing here at the church, here, you want to play some okay, if you don't mind. We're going to be changing our format. We're going to be changing our discipleship process. And so what we're going to do, and I'm going to expound on this later on, but what we're going to do is we have first-time guests that come. Normally they come to what service? The Sunday 12 o'clock service most of the time is when our guests show up. And so from there, we want to get them plugged into our foundations class. This is so everybody knows when they say, what does it take to be a member? I'm telling you right now what it takes to be a member at FAC. They're going to be a first-time guest. We're going to connect with them. And we're going to try to tell them about the importance of our foundations class. How many people have been through foundations class? Did you learn anything you did with me in the summertime? If you've ever been through it, we go through the basic foundational things. We talk about why the church is important. This is the, why God, who God is and why he loves you. We talk about prayer, praise, worship, or how to live an overcoming life. We talk about giving. We talk about uh, repentance, baptism, and Holy Ghost. There's eight or nine topics that we discuss. And we do them Sunday mornings during Sunday school. And so what we want to do is get the milk into our new converts, get milk into our guests. So we're going to take them up into our classroom and we're going to have our one-on-one -on -one study with that group of people, either taught by myself, Brother Galante, or Brother Spike for now. We may get some more teachers in there as well. And it's going to be on a rotational basis. And so if somebody comes in on week three, they can sit in on week three and go through week nine and then go back and do week one and two. And so we want to get them plugged in. That's the first thing we want to do. Get them coming to Sunday school and the evangelistic service. We're not adding another day. We're just adding an hour maybe to their day by coming at 11. And then we want to get them at the end of that, hopefully, thinking about ministry. What, can, what do you feel called to do? What do you feel led to do? We're going to try to get them plugged into something. But from there, we want to get them involved in Thursday night, small groups or Bible study. We're going to be changing our format. We're going to be going to a corporate Bible study for a few weeks, but then we're going to break out into small groups here at the church and take topics, and we're going to discuss them in groups. It's going to be an open format. People are going to study material ahead of time, come ready to share, answer questions, encourage and uplift one another. And so we're going to break that down maybe into small groups for four or five weeks. And then we'll come back and do corporate Bible study or whatever. Or we'll, we'll tweak that as the time goes on. And then from there we want to get them plugged into our prayer meetings. We want to get them establishing a commitment with God, coming to pray every single week and feeling what we feel every Tuesday night. And then hopefully they come even before that. That would be awesome. But we want to get the Word of God into their heart. We want to teach them the Word of God. Teach them what the Bible says about this. Because the Bible says we are destroyed for what reason? Lack of knowledge. And so we say in school, knowledge is power. So we want to empower the people when they come into this church. We want to get them connected into Bible studies and foundations class. We want to get them connected to worship and praise. Then we're going to get them connected in Bible study Thursday nights, connected in prayer meeting, because prayer meeting, anything goes. As we've learned in the last few weeks, there's prayer time, there's testimony time, there's worship time. We go back to prayer time, we go back to worship time, we go back to whatever. I mean, it's just a crazy time. So you all need to come. Of course, you were all here Tuesday night, but keep coming to prayer meeting. It's awesome. And that's what we're going to do. And hopefully, by the end of 13 or 14 weeks, we've got people that are connected to the church. People that are growing from milk into the puffs, into the oatmeal, into the mashed potatoes, into some chicken, into some steak. My God, I'm getting hungry now. Let's get some, let's get some steak rolling up in here. Listen, I want you to just look at yourself for a moment. If there are things that you want to experience, 
experience of God and you've not experienced that, I want you to check your maturity of God. I want you to look at yourself and say, have I progressed over the last X amount of months, X amount of years? If the answer is no, then let's start progressing. Let's get connected into what God has for us. Get connected to what God is speaking to the church. If you need extra Bible study, guess what? We'll teach you Bible studies. I will teach you whenever you need to. Amen. We've got other ministers and other saints of God that will teach you a Bible study. They'll break down topics, and I trust the people here. Some pastors are afraid of what so-and-so might say. I trust you enough, and I hope to God that you are spiritually mature enough to teach a Bible study. Amen. And I'll tell you what, our biggest growth over these last few months have been because of Bible studies. Brother Alex has been teaching at home. If you need more of God, we'll teach you Bible study on a Wednesday, on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday after church, Tuesday morning, whenever. We'll get with you, and we'll teach you Bible studies. Our church is going somewhere. Do you believe that? Our church is going somewhere. We're not where we were six months ago. And we're not where we were from there six months before that and a year before that. But God has been increasing. And I thank God for it. I thank God for your willingness to endure and your willingness to want more of God. Because he says if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you shall be filled. And God is filling us. Are we where we need to be? No. No, we're not where we need to be. But are we better than where we were yesterday? Absolutely. Are you better than where you were yesterday? Absolutely. Only you really know the answer to that. But from what I see from my vantage point as a watchman on the tower, I mean, things are looking good. People are progressing. And we're thankful for that. Would you lift your hands in this place? Would you lift your hands in this place? And I would invite everybody that would, if you would just come down to the altar today. And I want you to search yourself for a moment. If you're not where you want to be in God and your maturity, then I want you to come down and just begin to pray, Lord, help me understand the basics. Help me understand the... The, the milk, the sincere milk of the word. For those maybe that have been stagnant over the last couple weeks, couple months, couple years, I want you to come down and say, Lord, I'm ready to advance. I feel like I'm cutting some teeth. I feel like I'm ready for some stronger things. And begin to dive into the word of God at home. Begin to pray more than you've ever prayed before. Talk to us and say, man, I want to I wanna hear about this. I want to learn about this. And God's going to advance you. And for those that are looking at themselves and say, my God, I feel like I've been advancing. Don't stop. Don't stop pursuing. Don't stop reaching after God. Don't stop reading. Don't, don't think you've ever obtained where you think God has. I've, I've learned it all. Don't ever get to that point. Because the greatness of God, it says, is unsearchable. We can't even begin to fathom the power and the awesomeness of God. Hey, Amen. So don't stop. If you're progressing right now, on moving. Amen. Let God develop you. Let God develop your ministry. Let God develop your sensitivity to the Spirit. And we as a church, we're going to grow together. And we're going to be united. Amen. And we're going to, God is taking us to school. And we've been progressing spiritually. And I want to keep on maturing. I want to keep on maturing. Would you lift your hands and let God help you right now? I just want more of you in my life, Jesus. I want more understanding. I want more wisdom. I want more wisdom. I want to go to school. I want to learn. I want to learn why we do these things. I want to learn what you did for me. I want to learn. I'm hungry for you. I'm thirsty for you. Hallelujah. Come on, that's right. Now, there are people that are hungry. Reach out for them. God's going to fill you. Hey, man, if you're hungry, God's going to give you revelation. If you're hungry, he's going to reveal himself to you in a greater way. Through the word of God, by reading, through the preaching of the word of God, he's gonna, you're going to gain some understanding. Light bulbs are going to start to go off for you and say, man, that's what I've been praying about. I understand that now. Thanks be to God. Riando Koshadarabi.